So we want to finish up with a database connection. And once we are done with that, we can begin with the fun part of actually creating our system. So um, what we need to do is run this query thing here. So we've made a connection, but we need to be able to run a query. So how do we do this? Now here, query, we expect to get some things here. Now, the first thing is the query string because the query string is required. So we'll just run a query there like this. Okay. Now, because we want to be using prepared statements, all right, we want to add some data here. There'll be an array of data that we're going to give it. And then we'll be using prepared statement. Now, the reason we want to use prepared statements is this there's something called SQL injection. So let me explain this a little bit, even to just in case somebody does not understand. Let's say you want to log in a user. You and the user types in a username and password, right? So you're going to construct a query like this. Select all from users. Users is the table that you're selecting from and you tell it what, which row you want to get, the row of data, because really a database is just a table of information. There's rows and columns, right? So you want to know which column to get and what row to get. So here we're telling it to get all columns. That's why we have the star here. So select all columns from users table, where now we want to get the row. That's where we are putting the where clause. So which row do you want to get? So we can say something like where email is equal to, and then we provide an email here. So we'll put quotations because um, it's a string. So we'll say where email uh, at email.com. And then you want to know the password as well. So you say and password is equal to, and then you provide a password. Maybe their password is password like this. Okay. So this is your query string, and then you run this in MySQL, no problem. If you find this row with this user and uh, this email and password, things will work out and the user will be logged in. But some people are clever. What they do instead is they try to manipulate your string so that it allows them to do things that they're not supposed to. So for example, let's say user knows what your email is and they want to log in. So instead of providing a password, or instead of just providing a normal email, they're going to provide this email here. Mm -hmm. And then what they would do here instead, they'll put that email there. And then uh, they're going to say, so he'll put the, the user will put this email in your, uh, in the input. And then instead of just putting the email by itself, they're going to do something like, or one like this right now this doesn't make much sense so this is what they would type into the user input now because this doesn't make much sense because this thing is going to select and try to find an email that looks like this it won't find it but they are cleverer than that what they would do is they'll type email.com and then put a quote like this because they know that in your query there's a quote here and another quote at the end and then they'll say quote there and then they'll put an or and then they'll put another quote in there so this is what they'll type this here now it doesn't seem like a logical thing to do but when you think about it it has changed the way the query is the query now reads selector from users where email is equal to email so it will find this email right and they need to say or oh, one, you see? Now the whole thing has changed to an or statement. One will always be one, you see? It always returns true because this is how computers work. They'll just test, test something. If it returns a one, then it's, it worked out. If it returns a zero, then it didn't work out. So if you look at this one here, one will always be one and it will ignore everything else. So this statement now reads email is this or one, then it will find where email is equal to this and then or one. Essentially just ignores the rest of the query here because this or statement means if you find at least one thing that's correct, the rest doesn't matter. 
because it's or this or that right so at this point somebody will log in with just an email they've successfully hacked your uh, your server and allowed themselves to log in like this others what they do is because there's an and statement here which might throw a spanner in what they're trying to do they'll just put uh, a one there and then what they'll do is they'll put another quote and then do a dash dash like that which will leave the other quote down here like this they will even put a semicolon there like this if they want so as far as the database is concerned the statement has ended here the rest of this doesn't matter because this means this is a comment this means comment in mysql so the rest of this will be taken as a comment and uh, everything else will end here and the semicolon means this is another query and this is another query so this is how people manipulate your input so something as normal as a login page can be used to hack you or your your whole system so instead what we are doing with prepared statements is we are saying this we're telling we're going to write instead of writing our query like this we'll write it like this instead we'll say users where email is equal to and then we'll put a question mark there and then we'll say and password is equal to and then we'll put a question mark there okay and then later on we'll supply the information and say okay the first item is the email uh, the data for the first item is email um, at email.com and then the password is password so what we are doing is we're separating the information from the query so the query will go just like this into pdo so pdo will say okay so this is the query now give me what is supposed to be here and what's supposed to be there and then you send it as an array of data like this so you put the first one here the second one there and so regardless what they typed here whether they put semicolon whatever it is the database will know that all that should be regarded as information to be put here and not as part of the query so that's how you stop sql injection in its tracks so using prepared statements completely eliminates sql injection so it's a good idea okay so with that in mind let's uh, do our thing here actually with pdo instead of putting question marks we put things like this and then here we say password so we'll put a full colon there and then put the email and the pass that way whatever we put in our array we'll look at the key this will represent the key of that item in the array so this could be like email and that's an array like this and then password so this array will have a key of email and have the actual email and the key of password with an actual password so it will look here even if the order is different in the array it doesn't matter because it will look for the key and put the appropriate value in the appropriate place so something to keep in mind now since we have a connection here what we need to do is create a statement so a prepared statement of sorts so we're going to use the connection and say prepare this statement so we're going to prepare whatever query is applied here and we prepare it there uh-huh and then once the statement is well prepared so it's possible that the statement could come out as false, false like this. Yes. So we need to check that. So we just say if statement like this, because if it's false, this will be zero. If it's true, it will be one. So we don't need to say if statement is equal to true. No, there's no need. We can just do that as long as we know it's a true or false thing. Okay. So with that in mind, we can then say, if the statement is true now at the end here we're just going to say return false like that instead of a new which is by default we return false so that we can return true or false this just means if something good happens here we'll return a true but if it gets to this point if all this is run up to here then it means everything has failed so this just return a false because the way the word the keyword return works is if I put return here like that it means once the return key is hit the whole function is aborted so this means the end of the uh, thing so this will never run if there's another return at the top here this will never run so if I put two things like here 
and say return true. It means this code will never run in its lifetime because always when the function gets here to return, I never get to run this. So it means if we get to this point, everything has failed, so return a false. But here, now that the, the statement is okay, we can use that statement to execute something. So we use the statement to execute the query. Yes. Wait a minute. I'm confused here, but I think this is how it works. Prepare that and hmm, what am I executing here again? No. So to execute, since I've already given the query, why do I need, oh, I don't need to give it back here again. I can just put the data. So normally what you do is if you don't have data here to give and you're not using prepared statement because it's not a must that with PDO you have to use prepared statement. So if you're not using prepared statement, you can just ignore this like that. So this will execute whatever prepared query you've added will be executed here. But since we might be using prepared statement, we'll put that there. Now, even in our situation, there are times when we will not provide data because we are not using prepared statements. So let's make this optional by putting an empty array, which will supply here in case this is not, this is, because there are queries that are like this, like select all from users. You just want all records from users. You don't have a where clause to specify. In this case, there's no need to use prepared statements because there are no variables that you're adding here. So in that case, the data will be empty and will supply an empty piece of data there. Okay. Now here we need to check if things worked well. So this is just a checking mechanism through all force. Did it execute well? If it did, then let's get the result. So we say if check is correct, too many if statements, huh? I feel your pain. So if check, then let's do something, some result. Let's say, um, wait, are we using the statement or the check? I have no idea here. Let's try one of those, yeah? And we'll say fetch the data. We'll fetch all the data that was returned. Uh -huh. Now this one will be the result, right? Result is equal to statement fetch all. Now, when fetching here, we may fetch these things in two ways. If you like using arrays, you can fetch as an array. If you like using objects, you can fetch as an object. If you don't provide anything, it will fetch both array and object, but that's a waste of space and memory. So let's do a PDO uh, fetch. Uh, I like using objects. It's more adult than arrays. <laughs> so. If you want to get arrays instead, you can do a sock like this. But if you are the type that wants to choose between the two, you can just say, um, put a variable here called type and then just say object like this. And then you can uh, write between object and array, depending on what you want to get. So here the default will be object. So here we can put an if statement and say, if type is equal to object, right? If type is equal to object, then uh, let's put type is equal to, let's put that there. So let's put that there like this. And then we'll put type here instead, like so. Okay, that way we put type there. So, um, wait a minute, here we'll do this. We'll say type is a good object, uh, fetch obj. That will be the default. But if type is not object, if we typed anything else here apart from object, then let's fetch an array instead and put type there. So this will ensure that you can choose between the two. You can put array or you can put object and it will give you what you want. All right, here, if you don't have any data and you still want an object, you can just put an empty array when supplying information. So if the result was correct, then let's return the result, right? So here, what I'll do is I'll say if 
result. Now this result is going to be an array or false. So that's what you get. Either you get an array or an object or you get false. If it didn't go well, if there was no result, you get false or an empty. You get an empty object, an empty array or false if the whole execution failed. So what we will do is we're going to say if result uh, hmm this is complicated because here we have uh, oh yeah 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 no the result will always be an array because even if we are returning objects it will be an array of objects okay so or an array of arrays so we say if result meaning is relative true and just to be sure that it returned something and count result is greater than zero so what count does is it counts how many items because we know this is an array so a count only works on arrays so if this is true it births some result and count which is the number of items here is greater than zero meaning there there's actually a result then let's return the result if this didn't work it will end up here then we'll return false instead so this is the query function in full of our thing that's all we need really to read from the database like this mm -hmm. so from here what i will do is now, this will work even if we are reading or writing from the database, because if we are writing to the database, this fetch all won't actually do anything. Uh, let's see here. Check, and then if check, uh, result, statement, fetch all. Okay, so what will happen is this. If it's not... Uh, this this part is assuming this is a select statement okay but if it's not a select statement this won't even matter anyway because there'll be no result to fetch so it won't return into an array and um, let's see here let's make sure we are checking for an array so if is array you can do that to make sure okay if this thing is an array, it will check if it's an array and otherwise we'll get an error because this may be true, but then it's not an array and then we'll get an error saying you're trying to count a true or false value. Okay, so in this case, it will work for both reading and writing because if there are no results to fetch, it will just fetch something empty and then it won't go here and it will return false. So this is fine still. So let's test this a little bit. Okay. And, but the problem is we have no tables in our in our database, right? The database is empty for now, so we need to create some tables here. Now, I like to create tables here, but it's a good idea to create tables in code here. But I'll show you how to get the benefit of both. You can create your database here and then get the create statement and put it here for future use in case you delete your table. So let's do that in the next video.